Okay? And so he, they are worshiping idols. Okay? And so the, those who worship idols, as 1 Corinthians 10.20 says, the gods of the heathens are devils. He's not praising that. He's simply acknowledging that they are very superstitious religious people, and the fact that they admit that they are worshiping the unknown God, they're at least a step closer than those who claim to know God. They, in fact, don't know God, and by their admission that they don't know him, they're a little bit closer. Okay? That's all he's saying. But I can refute it further by quoting Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Oh, can, I, can I respond to that? Well, let me just finish, and then you can uh, respond. In, in uh, Custodi Quella Fede, he says that avoid those, okay, who hide under the mask of universal tolerance or respect for all religions. Okay, he says that this is an apostate opinion. We don't respect other religions, but that's what you're saying. Okay. Um, once again, going back to the passage that you attempted to interpret, but completely couldn't interpret any of it, I completely dis- disagree. Um, Maybe you want to look up a different translation there. He is not calling them superstitious. In fact, he used the term daimon in the Greek, and he tells them that they're religious, very religious in every respect. And once again, he later proceeds to say that the pagans are offspring of God. Maybe you should open up the Bible and read a little further. He calls them ganas, offspring of God. And as far as I can see, it's clear that the pagans were not worshipping God in the orthodox sense. But nevertheless, Paul recognizes their religiosity. He praises it and then tells them they need to turn towards Christ because it is now time for their ignorance to be eradicated. I mean, the point is that ignorance will not condemn an individual. You need to prove that ignorance condemns an individual. And if you are of the persuasion that ignorance condemns an individual, then you have to show me why Paul is referring to the pagans as ganas and calling them religious in every way. And I, I simply don't think you're able to. In fact, in a, a little further, Acts 17.29, he said, Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we had not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. Uh, he's definitely praising them and then telling them they need to, work, to turn towards Christ. Mm, okay, can I, can I respond to that? Let me just finish my sentence. The way they're worshipping is definitely incorrect. But mm. he's nevertheless praising them and telling them they now need to turn towards Christ. Yeah, he's not praising them. The fact that he calls them very religious does not mean that he esteems their religion. He's simply acknowledging that they are very religious people. They are very superstitious people, just like the Hindus who worship 30,000-some idols and false gods. They are, they are very... Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. And, in fact, he says that we're all offspring of God. Okay, Acts 17.28. He's speaking of the fact that we all are created by him. Okay, he's not saying they're children of God. That's blasphemy. That's why John 1 says that those who, who accept Christ, who believe in his name, become the children of God. But you're implying that the pagans who worship idols, as he says there, okay, who are blind in their darkness, are the children of God. That is totally heretical. That is precisely what I'm saying. That they're yes, blind. And, that is, and that is why you are religious indifferentist. And but but you I don't think I received a direct answer to the question. Does the Catholic esteem false religions? And I answered it to you with a biblical passage. And once again, so the answer is yes. Say, uh, I will point out to you that in this passage there is no use of the word superstitious. You continue using it over and over, and I guess you're unable to deal with the biblical text. Once more, he says that the Athenians, which are pagans, are religious in every aspect. And furthermore, he says that they are offspring of God. They are worshipping. I'm not saying that we are to uh, praise other religions for the way they worship, but nevertheless, he sees how religious they are, and he tells them that they are, tells them that they are offspring of God. They need to turn to worship God the correct way now. They're yeah. worshipping in ignorance. And yeah, I've already responded worship. to this, but you didn't answer it. Yes or no question? Do, does the, Does the Catholic esteem false religions or not? I just answered it for you. It so the answer, religion. yes, that's that's what you believe. The Catholic. No, I did not say that. I never said What's that your answer? answer. <laughs> yes or no? I answered in the biblical text telling you. you so you can't give me an answer. Individual, I'm attempting to answer when you're speaking over me. If an individual is worshipping contrary to the Christian faith, that definitely cannot be praised at all. But if an individual is in ignorance and they are attempting to reach the truth to the best of their, of their capacity, the individual should be told, you know what, you, you, I can see you're religious, but you need to turn towards Christ. This is the true faith. This that you're worshipping, as Paul tells them, is actually the one true God. You're not worshipping. Uh, there, there are no false deities. There's only one God. And in that sense, no, no, no false religion should be praised. We should praise the fact that they're attempting to reach the truth 
to the best of the past. Okay, and so that, all right. Great. So, we should turn into the so you, 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 your answer is yes, and the the. I answered it clearly. I never said yes. I, 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 I explained why. I explained the whole uh, qualifier. Do you accept the teaching it's of the? Not do, to do, do, explain yes or no answer. Do you accept the teaching of the Council of Florence, which declares that the Church condemns, rejects, and anathematizes whoever? holds opposing or contrary views to the church, and also that it execrates and condemns every heresy that suggests contrary to the Catholic teaching. Do you, do you accept that, that the church condemns and anathematizes and execrates every opinion, every religion, therefore, that is contrary to Catholic teaching? Every single religion and every single individual that are aware of the faith, that is the Catholic faith being the correct faith, and they're obstinate, and they continue in, the, in, in uh, choosing their religion, even if they know that the Catholic faith is the true faith. Absolutely, the individual gets. Yeah. Okay, well, he it doesn't say it doesn't say if you know it's the true faith. That that's not taught in the Council of Florence. Okay, it doesn't teach that. That's um, the Council of Florence. Uh, depending on what you're talking about, it's not even referring to what you're speaking of. Uh, I mean, it has, there's no section where it touches upon many of the false religions of today. Oh yeah, it says that all the pagans, all the Jews. All the You're heretics. Right. My point is, it's not referring to every single religion. I agree in the sense that every single religion, and if you read the context of the Council of Florence, every individual that realizes that, of course, the Catholic faith is the one. Where does it say that in the Council of Florence that what they realize? It doesn't. The council, where does it say that in the Council? The Council of Florence, uh, I'd have to pull up the document. It doesn't say it anywhere. I'm very familiar with the Council Actually, of Florence. You're, 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 you're very incorrect. In fact, I responded to. Uh, to I believe it's an article you did on Limbo, uh, where the very fact that you attempted to to show something from the Council of Florence, and the Council of Florence was definitely speaking of com something completely different. It's not speaking to, to individuals that are ignorant at all. You've got to read the context of the Council of Florence. And once again, uh, that's... I don't know if you deny, let me finish my sentence. I don't know if you deny invincible ignorance, but there's an exception. If an individual is ignorant, there's no possible way you can condemn the individual. It's not logical. It's not possible. Definitely an individual that is a pagan and a her is a heretic. An individual that is a Jew and knows full well the Catholic faith is a faith, is the correct faith, and they continue in their faith in an opposite manner. They would be a heretic and they would be condemned to hell. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and that's not the teaching of the Church. And in fact, in more than seven dogmatic definitions on outside the Church, there is no salvation. Every you can, one second, what, so I can get water. It'll be like maybe ten seconds. Okay, well, I could take a a, a break. I have to go, you know, bathroom. Okay, so, okay, wait, okay, okay, okay. About how, how long? Uh, Forty-five seconds. Gotcha. All right, I'm back. Okay. Um, and so, in in response to what you were saying about uh, the dogma. Outside the church, there's no salvation, and these statements about pagans, etc., only applying to those who know the true church. That is completely contrary to Catholic teaching. In more than seven ex cathedra statements on the issue, never once were any exceptions mentioned. In fact, they're all exclusive. All exceptions are always excluded um, in seven definitions on this. And we have to keep in mind that Vatican I declared that we must believe dogmas as Holy Mother Church has once declared. And there must never be a recession or a departure from that meaning under the specious name of a deeper understanding. And so if what you're advancing is not conform, does not conform to what was originally declared, it is heretical. Okay, and none of the the saints and missionaries believed what you're saying. Okay, they all believe that all the ignorant pagans are lost. I've studied the missionaries. It's one of my favorite topics. For instance, St. Isaac Job, St. Francis Xavier, who preached the gospel to heathen areas, they all knew the Catholic teaching that those who die in those lands, they're in darkness. Okay, they're worshiping false gods. They cannot be saved. And in fact, if what you were saying is true, which it's not, it would be a disservice to convince them of Catholic teaching because then only those who are convinced would be culpable. Okay, so you're convincing them, and now they can go to hell for rejecting the truth. It's, it's totally ridiculous. And it's not what Scripture teaches either. And the, for instance, about ignorance. Pope Benedict XV taught in Humani Generis Redemptionum, 1917, ignorance is the mother of all errors, as the Fourth Lateran Council so truthfully observes. Okay, and the errors of Peter Abelard, condemned by Innocent II, and that whatever is done through ignorance must not be considered a sin, condemned. Okay, so it's not like, well, they're ignorant, they're excused. No. 